Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season premiere of DC's Legends of Tomorrow, a great season premiere. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. First and foremost, we are picking up moments after the season six finale, after the other Wave Rider destroyed their Wave Rider, which they're like, wait, was that another Rogue Wave Rider? They're immediately thinking like someone hijacked it. I brought this up in the season six finale i think this is a time loop thing where it's like that's them in the future coming back to destroy uh their mach time machine because it's like right it's a you have to go on all the the journey that is this season you have to go on it to get to like things have to work out a certain way and it's like things worked out i think some things happen where it's like right we need to make sure it's kind of almost probably in game-esque where it's like we have to make sure that we uh, do what we need to do, set the timeline to continue the way it did so that we can make sure everything that happens happens because maybe there's some things that they don't want to reverse. So there might be some good, there probably some bad, some good, but it's just like, yeah, it was all a necessary part of their journey. So it's like, we need to go on this because, you know, whether it's personal growth or growth as a team, whatever the case may be, like they have to go through it. So that was my immediate thought of something of that nature when I saw like a wave rider destroying their wave rider. I was like, yeah, it seems like a, like I said, a time loop type of thing. So I do like that. They're like, right, let's get locked and loaded. Let's go in there, and we're going to get back. We're going to get on the way, right? We're going to kick whoever it is off, off of it, And but they couldn't go because the device to get up there is like, cool, it's uh, it's dead. I'm like, oh, cool. Like, did you forget to charge it, or it's just like you got so caught up in everything? What I'll also immediately bring up is I love that this episode is the legends personified. Like, the legends have bumbled things before, and usually, like, they're bumbled their way through an episode. I feel like this is the most bumbling they've ever done, timeline-wise. Because I think it's a beautiful thing about the legends. Like, that's that's even something uh, um, Ava said at the end of the season, and they played again at the beginning. It's like, oh, yeah, we never th do things ever, like, get tightly, like, wrapped up for us. It's usually a situation of, like, Everything that ever goes transpires in a season is usually their fault to some extent. So, for example, like I want to say the only season where things didn't go wrong because of them is technically season five with the encores. That technically wasn't on them to an extent. That's kind of like um because I think they talked about it at the the time. Like the the legends actually celebrated. They're like, yeah, this wasn't our fault for the first time. Cause literally everything that's ever transpired and been the main through line for the season is usually a byproduct of their mistakes, their misstep or their actions, you know, breaking time, uh, the mythories. Um, obviously, once again, the encores were them. Granted, it was kind of it was connected because of Constantine granted that was like that was more Astro but still it was like it was a Constantine related and obviously it tied into Charlie as well but it was like it was tangentially connected while also kind of being connected in the it's a whole thing so but this being an instance of like right we're bumbling here we're stuck here and I and it, and it brings that it presents like you know what makes Sarah and Ava so interesting of just how polar opposite they are Sarah is like the most laid back captain like she she's like no no it's all gonna work out she's like chill or right? is believing it she believes in the team that everything's gonna work out Ava's by the books of like no we need a concrete plan we need to list stuff off because that's who she is so it's like you know the very like lazy fair person versus the very type A person you know so it's like but that's you know opposite tra opposites attract you know it's like but that's what makes them the perfect team captain and co-captaining you know it's like that that's what makes them fantastic what they do so obviously you had the town folk like coming to the sheriff being like yeah like there's some weird stuff going on here's these lizards these lights some stuff falling from the sky all the stuff disappeared like yeah there's something going on here so Everyone's coming to Gloria's property. Luckily, Gloria's not there until she shows up later on. But that's after the fact is that, like, right, we need to get the everyone thinking that there's nothing weird going on here. Because if things kind of, like, because it comes up later on, like, yeah, Gloria's already an outsider in this town. It's already going to look badly upon her. So it is a situation of we have to make sure, like, we kind of, like, every time they try to make things better, it just gets worse. So first and foremost, they try, like, the whole circus situation. Uh, I love their, like, the Guggenheim circus. I was like, I love that, like, every chance they get, like, the Arrowverse in general, like, finds a way to squeeze in Mark Guggenheim's name. I, I mean, to be fair, it makes a lot of sense um, how tightly woven he is into, like, all of this. Because I believe, like, he's, like, an executive producer, like, uh, I think a part of this. I, I don't, like, I, I don't. Like, I don't know if he's, like, 
would you parallel his positioning and things with like Greg Berlanti on but maybe like oh almost on that same level when it comes to all of this so like it makes sense um but nevertheless uh but I love like yeah they're putting on a circus act and obviously they go in town trying to be like yeah we're not actually going to be a circus but we're just going to pretend to be a circus and they basically cut up a lot of stuff from Gloria's uh placed them you know curtains and stuff like that while uh Nate is wearing um Spooner's dad's like outfit like trying to pretend to be uh um J Edgar Hoover um and trying to like get the box because there's a fail safe because it's like most like time bureau ships have one and it's like oh because of that Ava made one it's like oh all we got to do is get that so the circus kind of falls apart because like uh, because I do forget, like, right, Gary's the alien, but I do forget he did study under Constantine for a while, so he was able to set his hands on fire. I was like, oh, right, right, you have access to magic. I, like, he doesn't use it much, because it's like, well, now that he's kind of alien, he kind of goes full-blown alien, but I'm like, he was also an apprentice, so, like, I still think him and Astor are still at the same level, but I still feel like Astor's are, like, a little bit above him when it comes to, like, her raking, because she's still kind of beginner in all of this, but... Nevertheless, I just thought it was so interesting how, uh, you know, they're all, like, explaining everything as way. It's like, oh, those lizard things you saw, those were uh, Komodo dragons and blah, 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 blah. Like, coming up with every excuse that it can be about, like, all the strange stuff that happened. Uh, but Gary slipped up and told everyone, like, oh, like, the, he got nervous. And now it's like, yeah, the uh, circus is actually going to be held here. And that's when Gloria shows up. So it's like... Which Gloria's like, yeah, like, even if she gets arrested, even if she gets ostracized, she's fine as long as, you know, she trusts Spooner to do the right thing. And, like, you know, it's like you're my daughter, so I, whatever happens, like, I, I know, like, I I got your back. I, I, I trust your judgment. And which Spooner was like, yeah, we can't have this circus thing here. My mom's already kind of ostracized enough. I don't want to cause more issues. So you have... Um, Astra trying to fill the Constantine role because it's like, right. Uh, well, because I forgot to mention, like, they found the failsafe box, but it's empty because Rory screwed him over. And I love it. Our premiere is just one final middle finger from Rory. Accidental. Who knows when he ended up taking it? Maybe, like, all that extra, like, because that, because I guess it's like, because we never found out, like, how he actually left. Like, I mean, you'd assume he went off with, um, Kayla, because we never just saw how they actually left, but maybe he so took that recently and is like, well, here, it's like, he wasn't intentionally, what you're, and back in my mind, I'm like, you don't think of some weird way, like, nah, it wasn't actually Rory, it was actually the other, like, potential legends, the ones that blew up their, uh, wave ship and just made it seem like Rory's the one that took it, or did Rory actually take it? Just, I think it's funny, like, unintentionally, it was a final middle finger from him, not trying to, like, he was screwing them over intentionally, but it's just like, once again, just like just everything going wrong, as I said recently, because I referenced it, you know, uh, Jackie Chan Adventures, bad day, bad day, bad day, you know, so. But regardless, like they don't have Constantine, so Astra's trying to fill that role and she's using her magic to try and use a resurrection spell, which is meant to be used on a human, but she's actually putting a ship together, which is pretty dope. But then it starts taking its toll on her and she ends up passing out, which that in itself draws the attention of the real Jay Edgar Hoover who got called by the sheriff because he's met, you know, because for him it's like Nate seems super suspicious, so now he's calling in the real J. Edgar Hoover after seeing like the well the the real the FBI when he sees like the picture of the real J. Edgar Hoover who decides that he thinks it's some uh bank robbing gang that's doing all this and obviously the smoke from um Astra's attempt to fix the ship that ended up, you know, drawing the attention. So it's like right, they've gotta hide. And luckily that key that um Constantine gave uh, Zari comes in handy because it opens up to not just not the mansion but like a pocket dimension that looks like the mansion and uh, it's a pocket dimension in hell which is like I guess it's like maybe you limit it with where you can put your pocket dimension or was him putting it in hell by design like maybe that's the only other like realm you could really put a pocket dimension without it like interfering in, in some shape or form like maybe hell has like like bound like the bounds of hell like works in a weird way that like it won't like mess with like the bounds of reality on earth but like, by doing it in hell you're fine like maybe on earth it would affect it i don't know I i'm curious like why specifically hell um but obviously for Zari, it becomes a question of like why does like did um did constantine like did john think like i needed this to get over him because you do have um 
Bear Odd trying to be there for her, you know, talking about it. And she's like, no, I didn't get dumped. It was just kind of like a mutual thing and we kind of went our separate ways. But it is a thing of like, right, she didn't get much clarity about the key. She also didn't get much of an answer about... Well, because she's trying to, you know, for her, it's like being like, you know, in front of the cameras and stuff like that is where she belongs. She's like, I don't need to find myself. And then she looks in the mirror and just kind of like, right. So later on, she does stay in that pocket dimension. I I was like, I kind of completely forgot for a second she was there because it's like, right, everyone else is doing their own thing. So I completely forgot she was there. So I thought that was uh, fascinating. But I I guess it's like, that's definitely going to be interesting considering like, well, because she does have the other Zari to communicate with. Plus, uh, Berard did find like his other gummies. He's like, oh yeah, I stashed him in this fail safe. And he left him for Zari, which I'm like, will she actually partake? We'll have to wait and see. But it's like, it's going to be interesting what kind of journey she goes on. Uh, the journey of like, oh, she's like, I don't need to find myself. Which is just, I find an ironic statement considering like, you're not just one Zari, you're technically two Zaris. Like the OG timeline Zari and this mod- modified, you know, your Zari 2.0. So that, that's why I'm like, it's it's interesting that she would make that statement. So maybe talking to her like previous timeline version will actually kind of help her figure out where she's going to go from here and, you know, life. You know, it's like, yeah, like, I, I think it's still like, you know, it's like and no breakup is ever easy, especially with, you know, things like that with John. So when the rest of the team comes back after Hoover leaves and it's like, well, what do we do? And so it's like. Hoover isn't someone who's just going to give up. So it becomes, you know, um, Sarah gets her idea of like, hey, why don't we actually pretend to be the bank robbers? Let's actually go rob a bank. And then he'll follow us because they're planning to go to New York because like the person who kind of helped make time travel is kind of around this time working on time travel. So it's like if we could get to New York, time travel, which... Ava's like, we're not going to, like, go robbing a place because, like, the manual's talking about, like, right, stay in a single spot. Like, there's a lot of weird stuff in the manual. Like, for example, like, Rule 44 about, like, yeah, making an excuse about if there's any questions about what you're doing, just say, like, oh, you're part of a circus. Like, keep it very generic and stuff like that. Just be uh, – circus is enough to kind of people be like, oh, okay, and just accept it as is. So Ava's like, we we were supposed to just stay in one spot – and going to New York is fine, especially if it means we're going to go time travel now, like robbing a bank to do it. But Sarah's like, I know like every, pl- every angle of the plans have kind of stumbled along the way. But, you know, if we do this, like think about it, when we get that, when we get like time travel again, you'll be able to work on your list. And I know how much you love lists. And we could go through every single thing that we need to change back so we could fix time. And it's like every single thing is like, yeah. So Ava's like a lot more on board. So they have to pretend that they tied up Spooner and Gloria like they were unwilling participants. It, and they leave. Astra obviously needs to stay behind. Well, Sir Spooner gives an opportunity to spend more time with her mom, but also got to look after Astra after she almost killed herself doing the magic. So, which really quickly speaking of that, I did like um, the fact is of what you know, because initially, like Spooner was kind of like Astra, Astra immediately took everything. It's like, oh, you're mad at me because I drew too much attention to your mom. Your mom lives in, lives in the boonies. There's no way that I'm going to draw attention here and drew like, you know, Hoover. But ultimately, I did like the conversation between her and Gloria because Gloria brings up the conversation about how she learned everything she can about being a healer from her mom. And it's like, and she failed at, you know, trying to do what her mom did. But it was like, right, I need to stop trying to do what she did and like remix it find my own path to being a healer and telling her um astra do the same thing because astra's like right the like the reason why she did what she did is because she's trying to be the new john she's like right you gotta you gotta go down this route of sacrifice and going along which is like that's how john like got magic to work but that's also because like astra's only known him to be the one person of magic so she's never really had other examples of like people using magic i'm curious like if she met Z- i mean i'm sure like zatanna's magic's different like she's my go-to when it comes to my magic she's like the only other like full-blown magic character i was like i guess like dr fate might be like the only other magic character i'm aware of but like a- along those lines i'd say like i mean especially because like zatanna is part of like the justice league dark with constantine so i think they're still in that same vein i don't know if like their magic kind of operates from the same place and realm you know so i you know that's ignorance on my part because i i'm aware the character zatanna i don't know a lot about her that's why i've always been excited whether it's a tv show or movie i'd always love to see like 
like Zatanna. Because anytime I've ever seen her, it's been in limited capacity. Like I'll always reference like Smallville, like um, Sharenda Swan, uh, who's currently on Coroner. Like she played, she made like two appearances as uh, Zatanna in the in Smallville, I believe. I want to say it. Uh, I'm going on. Well, actually, I was about to say. Well, you do have uh, Lena learning about magic right now too. But regardless. Um, I think you could almost make a parallel too, like, right, like, Lena trying to separate herself from her brother and Astra trying to re- separate herself from, like, Constantine, because it's like, John's not the model example you want to go after. Look how messed up he is. So, like, his way definitely isn't the best way, but I guess it's like, you kind of assume, like, magic, the way John approaches magic isn't the way he, the reason why he is the way he is. It's a, it's a big factor in it, but I think most people think that's just John's personality and stuff like that, but I think the way how he operates and how he gets to magic is the same way. Um, of, of that same ilk and vein or just kind of like, it's not just his personality, it's how he uses magic as well. So I think Astrid does have to find her own way to magic, which, you know, she hits it off with, you know, Spooner's like, yeah, it wasn't just about my mom. I was, you know, I was worried about you. You're my, like, my best friend. And like, Astrid's like, yeah, you're my best friend too. And I'm like, oh, I love it. I love that last season they did bond and get closer, especially because like, once again, it's like Spooner, like, like a lot of times, like since like last season, like Spooner, anytime she's going off somewhere, she's got Astrid by her side. I'm like, that's pretty dope. Um... Because it also means a lot, I think, for Spooner, like, because both of them, like, in their own regards, like, they spent so much time alone, and they've never really had any friends, and now they have the legends, uh, you know, but I think amongst any of the legends, they're the most kindred spirits of, like, right, so, uh, we both kind of lost our moms for different reasons, um, we both were kind of grown up in just complicated circumstances, you know, so they've never had, like, normal lives or childhood, so that's what I think bridges the gap between what kind of brought them together in that regard, so I thought that was neat. I thought it was interesting, too, like, Astra's like, yeah, I was one word away from finish- finishing stuff, but she's like, I wasn't strong enough. John probably would have been able to do it, but her speaking that one last word activated the spell because... I, I didn't, and that's interesting to know like a spell I guess is always in like is she le- she left it at the 95% mark and I guess it stayed or maybe just that last word enough is in, like a spell on its own like even though the spell wasn't technically complete maybe by finishing that last word it's like maybe the spell had like discharged a little bit and that spark at the end like I, I'm curious like how they would explain that is it just oh it was 95% and she pushed it over to 100 that's why it happened or did it kind of like wind down a little bit because like yeah because she only used the final word and that sparked part of the spell the end part of the spell but not the so she only sparked like the five percent of the spell and that brought Gideon to life and a bunch I'm like yeah which I'm excited because um I, I think it's pretty dope like the actress who plays Gideon she's voiced the character since the beginning of the series but she's only ever been on camera like what I want to say this might be her fourth time ever being on camera like because you can literally count on one hand the number of times like Gideon's ever had like had a physical form whether it's just like um shenanigans that's led to it or whether it's just like oh this is all like a simulation and stuff like that like god one of the i want to say maybe the first time gideon ever had a body was um that thing with uh rip because it was kind of a thing between them um but i think that was kind of a a virtual reality thing and then i want to say maybe it was during the um sisters of fate situation so this might actually be the third time Gideon's ever had a body. I feel like I referenced it in a past and in, in, um, in one of those like a, a previous Legends review, like you know, in one of those instances that you know, obviously you can't help but make the Doctor Who comparison. But I like well because obviously Arthur playing Rip and everything, like yeah, that was that. But also like I believe I might have made the reference at the time, but if not, I'll make it again. It's like um, or make it for the first time if I didn't, but. Uh, it reminds me of in Doctor Who. It's one of the Matt Smith seasons, so it's like six or seven, five or six or seven. I want to say it was six. I think it was. I think it was with Amy. It might have just been Amy. So if it was just Amy, maybe season five. But if it was Amy and Rory, season six, I believe. But uh, there was a point where the TARDIS got a body for a little bit, you know. So like, it's very reminiscent of that. Now the question now becomes. Is the Gideon in front of him, does she remember, like, does she get ready to, like, have a human body now, um, or is she, like, full-blown organic, is she, like, an android, I'm assuming, like, full-blown organic, but it's, like, if that's the case, 
does she remember who she is? Because they're like Gideon, and she doesn't say anything. Maybe they'll wait to the next episode. But it's like, if she says something, that means she does know who they are, and maybe has all her memories intact, or maybe she's just kind of a blank slate. They're gonna have to fill her in on about everything, you know. Which I think that's gonna be an interesting thing with uh, both. Sarah and Ava. Well, because with Ava, this is the whole clone conversation. For Sarah, it's the whole clone conversation. Like, right, we know what it's like to be kind of semi-artificial human being. So, but granted, like, they're made from science. She's made from magic. So, it's a little bit different. But that's definitely going to be interesting. And I, I like the fact is that we are kind of like, I guess, compensating the ranks for the fact is that obviously there's no Constantine for now. Well, Constantine in the sense like there isn't, John's not going to be around. But... Matt Ryan, obviously, like, um, someone had informed me, like, during season six finale, plus I've seen articles pop up about it. It might be out there what his character is. I haven't looked into it because I don't want to know. Uh, but he is returning to the show. He's just going to be a different character. So what those circumstances are, like I said, it's probably out there, but I don't know what it is. I can't even begin to know what it is just without looking into it. Like I said, I don't want to, so, um... So, kind of filling that void, plus, like, you know, uh, Mick being gone as well, so, uh, adding, uh, filling in the ranks a little bit more, so, that's interesting. Um, aside from all of that, we do have, um, our legends going on a bank robbery spree, and I love, like, honestly, Ava and Sarah, like, make good bank robbers, like, honestly, like, Sarah's kind of all about it, because it's like, well, considering she was with the League of Assassins for a while, it's kind of like, you know, it's like, yeah, kind of living on the dangerous side, like, you know, kind of get wild, and, and how many opportunities do you get to, like, rob a bank in, like, 1925 and stuff like that, so... Uh, they're doing their thing, and I love I love that le random lady that's outside being like, "Oh, you're this particular gang." Wait, she's like, "Oh, I'm a fan." It's like she's like, she means like, "Oh my god, I know you guys are robbing the bank," and it's like, "Oh, um, wait, they don't let women into those gangs." It's like, and it's like, "All right, so we're not that gang." It's like, "Oh, you can't steal a gang's name. That's wrong." And it's like, "Well, we don't have a name." And it's like, and I love I love uh, Bear Robin Ling. How about the le legends? of tomorrow and like he's like oh that's a mouthful it's like yeah you're right and i'm like oh okay okay and then it's like what was i forgot what it um bullets and blondes or something like that and honestly you know it's like well it works because ava and sarah you rest of you might be in the gang but sarah and ava are the ones doing all the heavy lifting um i love that they get like 90 some dollars and a specific amount of cent and then sarah's like why is that because ava's like that's going to be just enough to get us to like uh New York, because it's like, yeah, they had that much in the registers without having to go to the safe, so I love that whole thing, but I love the lady being like, yeah, the uh, Bullets and Blondes, they're the ones robbing, and everyone's like, yeah, which is so interesting, like, it's almost like, it makes me think of, like, the Phantom Thieves from Persona 5, at least, like, in, at certain points in the game, without without spoiling things, but I like how people are like, yeah, Phantom Thieves, do your thing, like, that whole thing. Uh, so it kind of, it feels a little reminiscent of that, of just kind of like, yeah, them celebrating you, and it's like, yeah, we're sorry about the gunshots and everything, you've been a great audience, and they bail, um, so I love that, they're kind of getting away, and it's like, yeah, but, uh, Jay, uh, Edgar Hoover, like, blocks him, and it's like, how did he get in front of us, and he also knows our name, they didn't comment on that, but it's like, how do you know our name already, we literally just came up with it, I, like, how, how, it's like, Nate was saying, like, the dude's, like, relentless, so Gary gets in the back, and, um, Nate, like, armors up, like, steals up, and so, like, all the bullets are bouncing off him, and they make it through, they're like, yeah, but then Hoover is on top of the truck, and it's like, okay, uh, and they stop, and it's like, oh, crap, did we kill J. Edgar Hoover, but it's like, oh, no, oh, good, he's alive, and he's muttering something, he's like, they're like, what, and he's like, I never missed twice, and he pulls out his gun, tries to shoot Nate, but Nate steals up the bullet, ricocheted, and killed him, I was like, yo, that was so fast. Because at first it's like, oh, is he dead? But it's like, oh, no, he's fine. Let's get out of here. Oh, no, the bullet ricochet. I was like, that was so, ugh. Once again, everything's going wrong. And Ava's just like, kill me now. And she just lays in the road. And it's just like, I'm I'm done. You know, but Sarah's like, don't worry. Like, this is a bump and roll. Just another thing we add to the list. And Ava, because I even love like, ooh, did, did we break Ava? And then Ava comes back and just ready. Especially because like, Sarah's like, yeah, we can listen to one of your podcasts. And it's like, in this moment, she's like, 
right, my crime podcast, podcast. And I'm like, I love that's been like a just a, a constant thing that gets brought up every once in a while about Ava. Uh, perfect. I mean, you know, it's like a, there's a lot of podcasters out there. And so knowing that Ava has her own podcast, I wonder have they ever done anything real with that? I, I think it'd be probably too meta to actually do anything if they haven't. Like, I haven't looked into it. I should to see whether or not her podcast actually exists. If the actress who plays Ava actually does a podcast. But like, I mean, that'd probably be like too above and beyond. But that'd probably be like, if it was, it'd be like a, probably a one-off thing. But then that's the problem. Like, fans can be like, myself included, could be too like, I mean, because I also like how deep into crime dramas you get. Like, I don't focus, like, I watch a lot of crime dramas, but not, like, true crime stuff. Like, Ava's super into true crime stuff. I'm sure that would kind of take its toll on you, like, balancing your work, plus that'd be extra workflow. To you. It, it's a whole thing, so I think it'd be too much to, like, do that as a supplementary thing. But regardless, like, it could be a promotional thing, but the problem is if you did it for promotion, people would be like, actually, I want you to do it more. I swear I feel like they have done that. Like I said, I haven't looked into it, but I swear I feel like there was something related to that done that they have done something of that nature, but, you know, maybe that's just me, like, thinking it happened when it actually it didn't. But Ava's kind of like, all right, we got to get, you know, it's like, right, so no witnesses, so we got to get rid of the body. And Sarah's almost like, whoa, like, what's going on? She's like, like, oh, I'm kind of liking this, like, ooh, let's get stuff done, Ava, like, kind of like, oh, like, Ava's like, yeah, this is, this is my wheelhouse. Like, I, this, this is, like, I've read, like, I've studied enough, like, serial killers and, like, this is, this is my time to shine on, like, how to, like, clean up a crime scene. So it's like, Gary, get to eating him. It's like, wait, you want me to eat one of the most important men in, like, the 20th century? It's like, do it, Gary. And he's just like, yeah, I'm not going to enjoy this, even though, like, you know, I do love the taste of mm, humans. And so he's disposing of J. Edgar Hoover's body. And it's like, I think we're definitely going to see a different Ava going forward this season. I think this sparked something a little different. I think Ava's going to go a little dark side this season. That's going to be so fascinating. Dude, I'm so excited to have Legends back. I was actually shocked because I think because of everything like being pushed back and like around just because of, you know, like the pandemic and everything a lot of stuff did get renewed early on so they were able to start on stuff a lot sooner so but i'm also like you i, I feel like we never get even in normal time we never get legends this early it's usually quite a bit when like other stuff pop back up and then we're getting but regardless i was just like i didn't expect the turnaround to be this quickly but it's like yeah they're they've probably been working on like early parts of like the season like you know while before like probably like either while the final episodes of season six were airing or whether it was like just in the time in between that they've been like working hard on it. But regardless, I'm, I'm excited to have the legends back so soon. I'm so excited to see what this season has in store for us. Uh, most of the promotional material I've seen, like I haven't watched any like the full length trailers and stuff like that, but I've only seen like the fractions of stuff that's like from this episode. So I have no idea where this season's going to go. It's, it's definitely going to be interesting. I'm curious to see how much time they're actually going to spend here in like the 1920s like because it doesn't seem like it's gonna be like a i mean maybe it's gonna be over and done with next episode i don't see that happening but maybe um i'm curious to see what happens like also like how, how do you handle like the edgar hoover thing like now that he's going like what kind of ripple effects that's going to have once again it's also interesting because it's like we haven't come into contact of like oh the main antagonists have revealed themselves or something like that it's like no like the legends are their own worst enemies yet again so i think that's going to be the biggest issue of like right we're living in a timeline where things are completely different we inadvertently killed j edgar hoover and what that means in the grand scheme of things, we'll have to wait and see. I'm so excited to see what the next episode has in store for us with all of this. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.